Hockey is right around the corner, and you know what that means. Teams are finalizing their rosters they want to use for opening night. The Penguins have cut 18 players down to Wilkes-Barre, and the roster they have now is pretty much the NHL roster minus just a couple players. So there is one more set of cuts that needs to be made. Now, before we get into who's still left on the team and who might make it, let's get into who they cut first. The Penguins have cut 12 forwards, and that is Adam Johnson, Jimmy Hayes, Tobias Lindbergh, Joseph Cramarosa, Thomas DePauli, Teddy Bluger, Sam Aletic, Sam Lafferty, Anthony Angelo, Linus Oland, Garrett Wilson, and Ryan Haggerty. None of these are too much of a surprise, but some of these guys did have a really good training cap and a really good preseason, and it sucks to see them get sent down. But I do see some of these guys getting called up somewhat midway through the year. One of those guys being Adam Johnson, who impressed me the most from these guys that got cut. He was the fastest, and I think he should be one of, if not the first one to get called up when there is an injury. Another forward that I think could see some NHL ice time this year is Tobias Lindbergh. I mentioned him in my prospect pyramid video that I made last week. And I said that if he has a good AHL season to start and if there is an injury, I don't, I would not be surprised if he is the first guy to get called up. Teddy Bluger is another one that it just kind of breaks my heart to see him go down. I can only imagine what it feels like to be him because like I said, last year, he was this close to be the team's fourth line center. He lost out on the spot because he was just, he didn't have the NHL experience. Greg McKegg beat him out to it because he had the NHL experience. This year, it's just Penguins are stacked. They just signed Matt Cullen. They have Riley Shan. They have Derek Broussard. Uh, they have Grant, Derek Grant, who, who's still on the team. He's looking like he's going to be the fifth center. And Teddy Bluger just falls down to that sixth center spot. But for Teddy Bluger, he shouldn't worry. He needs to keep his head up. He's going to be a solid NHL player in his career. Whether it's with the Penguins or whether it's with another team, he's going to be a solid player. He should be a fourth line center for... 95% of the teams right now in the NHL. It's just that the Penguins are stacked down the middle. But like I said, I hope he doesn't get discouraged because the Penguins will need to look at these guys next year because Derek Broussard, I don't know if he's going to resign. Riley Shan, I don't know if he's going to resign. Matt Cullen, most likely going to retire. And uh, next year, they're going to they're gonna be in the same spot they were last year where they're going to need a new third and fourth line center. And that's where Teddy Bluger, I think, will shine. And as for the rest of these guys, uh, Joseph Kr Kramarosa, not going to lie, I haven't really heard too much of him. I don't think he really has much of an NHL future. Jimmy Hayes, kind of the same thing. I don't think he's not much of a prospect. Uh, maybe if he has a good AHL season, he gets to be called up somewhere down the line. I doubt it, though. Then we have Sam Miletic, Sam Lafferty, Anthony Angelo, Linus Oland. Who those guys I think will make the NHL, not this year, maybe not next year, but down the, down the line, maybe in three, four years. They're all really good. They're just way too young. They weren't supposed to make the team, but some of these guys did have good uh, training camps. So I'm really excited for guys like Sam Aletic, Linus Oland. These guys are just 20 years, uh, 20 years of age. So they still have years to go. So I think, you know, going down to the AHL for a couple of years, I think that's the best thing for them right now. And the last forward on this list is Ryan Haggerty. Ryan Haggerty reminds me of Carter Rowney. He's 25 years of age, and when Carter Rowney got his chance in the NHL, he was, I believe, 26 or 27. And he got his first stint with the Penguins, and he just ran with it. And then he ended up being a Stanley Cup champion, and he got a great contract with the Anaheim Ducks. Ryan Haggerty, he's 25, so I really don't think he's going to make the NHL, but he, with, with what he showed in the preseason, I think he can be a guy like Carter Rowney, who maybe somewhere down the middle comes up, and proves that he's really good, even though he's the, uh, at the age of 25. All right, that's for the forwards. For the defensemen, we have uh, Chris Summers, Stephen Elliott, Will O'Neill, Jeff Taylor, and Ethan Prow. None of those defensemen really have any potential. Ethan Prow was a guy that I thought could have made it when we first signed him two years ago when he, was, when he was 23, but he's made no improvement, no jump since then. And being 25, about to turn 26, I don't really see much for him. And obviously for the goaltenders, we just have one, and that's John Muse. Not much to say about him. He's not part of the, the future plans. Uh, he was just there, and obviously, we all know he wasn't going to make the team over Murray, uh, DeSmith, and Tristan Jari. All right, so those are the 18 players that got cut. Now we're going to move on to who is still on the roster, who has a chance of making it, and who will be part of the final cuts. Let's start with the defensemen. We have nine defensemen, and the Penguins need to cut two more guys. So we have, obviously, Brian Dumoulin, Jack Johnson, Chris Letang, Olimata, Jamie Oleksiak, Yusuf Ricola, Chad Ruido, Justin Schultz, and Zach Trotman. For me, I'm kind of shocked that Zach Trotman is still on this list. He kind of reminds me of a right-handed version of uh, Jamie Oleksiak. Do I think he'll make the team? Not really. And the reason why I say no is because the guy who's really been drawing all the attention to himself is Yusuf Ricola. So obviously, the six guys that are locks are obviously Letang, Mara, Schultz, Dumoulin, Johnson, and uh, Oleksiak. Those six guys are making it. It's pretty much between Ruido, Ricola, and Trotman for the fight of the seventh defenseman spot. In my opinion, I think Chad Ruido will win over that spot as uh, seventh defenseman because, number one, he's been in that 
position before. He's been our seventh defenseman for a long time. And number two, I think Yusuf Ricola will benefit more in the AHL than just being a seventh defenseman. Because don't forget, he's still 24. He can grow. He still has one or two good years left of growing to be a better defenseman. So if we're going to use him as a, as a seventh defenseman, honestly, I'd rather use him as a number one, number two guy in the AHL and have Chad Ruidel, who's not really going to grow anymore as the seventh defenseman. But I would not be surprised if Ricola does beat out Chad Ruidel for the seventh spot because He's by far had the way better preseason than Chad Ruedel. But I just think in my opinion, it just it would benefit him more to get top minutes in the AHL. Let him get those top minutes playing against top AHL talent. And then when we do need him, he's already been adjusted to those top minutes where he can come in and transition smoothly into the NHL instead of being sitting down as a seventh defenseman. And then when we need him, we put him in for his first NHL game. I think that's just, you know, setting him up for failure. And now for the forwards, we have Zach Aston Reese, Derek Broussard, Sidney Crosby, of course. Matt Cullen, JSD, Derek Grant, Jay Gensel, Carl Hagelin, Patrick Hornquist, Phil Kessel, Evgeny Malkin, Brian Rust, Riley Shan, Dominic Simon, and Daniel Sprong. That is 15 forwards. Out of those 15 guys, I think two need to be cut. So two of these forwards will be cut in my opinion, and then now we'll leave them with 13 forwards, 12 to be in the lineup, and then that one extra guy. I think JSD, Dominic Simon, and Derek Grant are, those, uh, are the three forwards that are fighting for that final spot. Daniel Sprong and Zach Aston Reese, in my opinion, are locked into the, into the lineup. Now, out of those three guys that I mentioned, who has the better chance to make it? We have Dominic Simon, who's been there before, and we know Mike Sullivan likes because he's put him on the top line with Crosby multiple times. But then we have Derek Grant, who has the experience, and we know that in the NHL, experience is way more valuable than youth, to coaches, of course. And then we have JSD, who, in my opinion, I think he's the guy who gets cut. He's probably one of the first to get cut. Honestly, I think Dominic Simon should beat out Derek Grant, but the same thing like Yusuf Ricola and Chad Ruedel, Dominic Simon is still pretty young. He could get, he can grow. He needs the ice time. So I think putting him in a, on the first line in the AHL will benefit him way more than it's going to benefit Derek Grant. Yes, Dominic Simon would learn a lot watching from up there in the NHL, watching NHL players, practicing with NHL players. He would learn the NHL life, but he would also learn a lot more playing a lot of minutes which is what you need for a young player you need to play them as much as you can so if you're not going to play him in the nhl just put him in the ahl it's there's nothing wrong with playing in the ahl that's what i'm afraid of i, I hope it's not really a demotion it's just more like play until there's an injury instead of sitting in the press box you know and then when there is an injury i think a guy like dominic simon should be the first one to be called up and then a guy like you know teddy bluger and then a guy like adam johnson so yeah give me your thoughts who do you think gets that final forward spot will it be uh, Dominic Simon, Derek Grant, or maybe even a sleeper like JSD. So let me know in the comments and let's move on to the final uh, position here and that's the goaltenders. So we all knew this was going to be a problem. Who is going to be the backup to Matt Murray? Obviously Matt Murray is locked in, but who's the backup? Casey DeSmith or Tristan Jarry? Well, I think Casey DeSmith will be the backup. Meanwhile, I want Tristan Jarry to make it. Now, nothing against Casey DeSmith. I love DeSmith. If he's the backup, I don't have no problem with it. But I think Tristan Jarry should be the backup because he's not getting any younger. He's 23. Last year, what they did with the Smith and Jerry, I agreed with. Jerry was still too young to be, you know, maybe a full-time backup. Now at the age of 23 and with some NHL experience under his belt, I think he needs to be the backup. He spent too many years in the AHL. How many more years are you going to give him? He's ready to be the backup. He's had a really good preseason. He's actually been playing better than Casey DeSmith in the preseason. And I think he needs to be the backup. He needs to take that next level in his development. But the one thing I don't want is him to be the backup and him to barely play. If you remember last year, Matt Murray sometimes had to play the back-to-backs on his own because the Penguins didn't have a reliable backup. That can't happen. We don't want to tire Matt Murray. He's already a guy who gets injured quite often. We don't want to just tire him with like 60 games of, 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 uh, of the regular season. We want Matt Murray to be fresh for the playoffs, and I think he could do that. And I think you can trust a guy like Tristan Jari to play 25, 30 games as a backup. Now, I just hope the Penguins don't waste Tristan Jari in the AHL because he's got a two-year deal at a, less than a million dollars. In his next contract, the Penguins won't be probably resigning him. He's going to want money. I'm assuming in the next two years, he'll be a starting goalie in the NHL. It'll be like a Luongo Schneider thing. And I really hope that's the case because then I think that's where you trade Jari and you get a big return back for him. You know, so that's why I want to play him in the NHL from now. I don't want him. The more time he has in the NHL, the more he shows other teams that he's ready to be an NHL goalie, the more his value grows. But just to wrap it up, like I said, I don't mind who's the backup. I think they're both great goalies who will both do a good job as the backup. Casey DeSmith will do a great job. Tristan Jari will also do a great job. So honestly, I'm confident we have three great goalies. Obviously, Matt Murray's the starter and whoever the backup is, 
I don't mind. Like I said, I think Mike Sullivan will go with uh, Casey DeSmith, but I just hope Tristan Jari does get time you know, throughout the season. So that's going to wrap it up for me. Thank you guys so much for watching, and don't forget to comment your thoughts on who you think will make the team for the goalies, defense, and forwards. And uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video.